G'day guys, welcome back. I'm so excited to be back, let me tell you. Alrighty, so today I thought we'd do something a little bit different, a little bit special. And this has been a project on my mind for a couple of months now. So I thought what we do, given the year that 2020 has been and everything that's been going on, why not do a medieval style Plague Doctor mask? So we made this one. This is awesome. I'm so happy with this and it's been so much fun to do, not cost a whole lot of money either and we'll go through that as we get into the project. heads up these are not actually medieval I say medieval style a lot of people associate them with the medieval period they're not um, these didn't come in until much later with Halloween just around the corner I thought I'd do three or four videos around the subject and we'll cover this and the Black Death and what actual Halloween was in medieval times as well as specifically looking at these Today, however, is simply a video about having a bit of fun and making one of these because it, it is a lot of fun to do, <laughs> let me show you, uh, and, and basically doesn't cost that much money at all. So let's get cracking. The first thing you're going to need is a pattern. Now I happened to come across a really nice pattern, I really liked it on Etsy. I've got a link in the description below. Thank you so much for letting me do the build by the way. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I would have done my own pattern, I, I just basically I came up with this as an alternative and there's no point really kind of you know duplicating where you don't need to. What I really liked about this pattern is that it is just a very easy, simple pattern to follow. And if you look at the first page, you'll see that this is all the components you should end up with. So it's not very difficult to think, right, you go, okay, so I've got two of these, but obviously one's left, one's right, that kind of thing. Right, you go, now we've got everything all marked out. Now you'll notice the actual pattern itself has heaps of holes, right, you go. Now these are the two hole punches that I'm gonna be using. These larger holes are for the air holes. These smaller holes, now you'll notice my punch, I've got a whole range of these punches, but the spacing is not quite the same as on the pattern. So I'm not gonna be cutting any of the holes out of these. Instead, I'll go through and do that a little bit later. Make sure you have a nice new sharp blade for when you're doing something like this. Take your time, you're cutting through fairly thick leather so there's no point rushing it. So just while I'm here, I'm just going to bevel these edges. So edge beveling simply means that you 
just trim off the edge of your leather and it provides it with a, a much nicer, it's just one of those kind of attention to detail things that I think is really important to do. And I do that to both sides. Now this is just the external sides. You don't need to do it on the internal sides in this one because this is just gonna go, so this is gonna hold the lenses in place. Before I even think about assembly, we've gotta get all these holes punched in. So I'm gonna set up my stitch groover. Ordinarily these things are awesome for, meaning that your stitching goes below the surface of the leather. However, in this instance, what it does is it means that my hole punching will be at a nice consistent uh, distance from the edge of the leather. Now, as I mentioned before, my hole punch is, is different to the holes on the pattern. So um, I'm working from what I got. So with the larger holes, I just line up with a stylus and just marking out the center of each of these holes. So we're just gonna use a stitch groover and just reference that against the pattern piece. So you're sewing at the correct distance from the, the edge. For the most part, I'm just eyeballing the distances between the uh, holes. Alrighty, so let's start some stitching. Now, I'm pretty generous with the amount of thread that I'm gonna use. I usually go for approximately eight times the length for something quite like this. So what we're gonna do here is a, um, this is gonna be a decorative stitch. We're gonna do a zigzag stitch on the outside. Um, it's not structural or anything like that. This is purely aesthetic. In other words, it's just for looks. Now, some people I know use stitching ponies. Some people use all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, I'm a simple guy. I like simple things. So I'm gonna, going to use a just two blunt needles is all I'm using. Now, the trick to this is to make sure that you have pretty much the same amount of thread on each side and you do want to keep the stitching pretty tight so as you go through and you pull you'll find that the stitching will go through slightly to the other side you don't necessarily want that you want to try and keep it even as best you can Um, I use a waxed linen thread. I find that works really well for me. Um, you know, there are different thread types out there. It's going to depend a lot on, on you and your own personal preference as to what you decide to use, and that's fine. Just be patient with your sewing. It does take a little bit of effort, and you've got to keep an eye on what you're doing, otherwise you might miss something and that's okay um, with the advantage of hand stitching this is that you can always come back and just undo a few stitches it's not the end of the world
I just simply remove my needles and then just tie off with a very basic reef knot or a square knot. Super, super simple. That just holds everything in place. As I said, this is not structural, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then just burn that down. Medieval Mayhem has now uh, released our Patreon page. What is Patreon? Patreon is a website where you can contribute to artisans such as myself and so, so, so many more. The idea is that you can contribute a little bit financially. I've got a whole range of different tiers starting at just $3, going up through five and 20 and so on. And the idea here, guys, is that you can contribute. These videos all cost a fair bit of money to do. There's cameras, technology, there's different computer programs, there's the actual computers themselves, there's uh, processing software, there's all kinds of different things that you've got to pay for and none of it's cheap. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys were to consider being part of the Medieval Mayhem community on, on Patreon because I think it's a really great space, it's a really fantastic opportunity for you guys to really actively become part of the process of producing some of these videos. We've got roughly 250 videos up at the moment and there's around about 300 in various stages of planning and pre-production and it's some really fascinating and really exciting projects to do that's coming up in 2021, 2022. Hopefully, hopefully next year is nothing like this year and we can really get our teeth stuck into some of these projects. Unfortunately, a lot of the videos that I've wanted to do, I just, I haven't been able to do because of, of COVID. So uh, fortunately, fortunately, a new year is just around the corner. Some big opportunities are coming and I'd really like you to be a part of it. So there's a link down in below. I'd really like for you to, uh, to give that some thought. Let's get back to the video. So just before we get going on this one, we're just gonna shave a little bit off. these edges and the idea is this will make it a little bit easier with the assembly. You can use a what, what they call a skiver to do this or you can just use the edge of a sharp knife. All right and this is basically a saddle stitch that we're going to do. Yeah I get it some people use little stitching ponies and stuff for this. I haven't got one of those yet. I may have to make one. It just depends on, on what you're doing and what you need, I guess. Um, there are other ways that you can achieve the same kind of outcome. However, sti um, subtle stitching like this is a very strong stitch. So this should help uh, mask last for like ever. And the advantage of it is that there's no going back over it. It is a fairly quick and easy stitch to do. So once again, we're saddle stitching. Um, I probably need to get myself some stitching ponies, but that's cool. We can, uh, we can sort that out. Alright, so alrighty, so now we've got the last piece to put on. As you can see, it's starting to take a fair bit of shape and it's going really well. These are the parts we now have. Now what we're going to do is just basically stitch the front up and it's getting pretty late so I'll um, park it there for tonight. So once again we're going to use the same zigzag stitch as we have done. For those of you who don't have access to stitching ponies, an alternative 
would be just to use some cardboard and fold that flat and then use a fold back clip to hold your leather in place. So I'm going to do that a couple of times. So at this stage we now have a really good looking mask, I'm really seriously happy with this, the way this has come out. Okay, now into the assembly, we're just going to take one of these straps, pass it into this part of the leather. I do very simple stitching for this kind of thing, uh, I basically do a running stitch in one direction and then come back out the other way. So it gives you essentially a saddle stitch. It's very easy, very simple. I'm a simple guy. This is not kind of, it's really for aesthetic value more than anything. I guess it's functional, it's holding the thing in place, but the point is that Yes, in some ways it would help to have a stitching pony around about now. I'm going to have to make one, I've decided. I've got a lot of um, really cool leather projects coming up and I could probably benefit from <laughs> some decent tools. So. so with this, no matter what your whole configuration is, the, the simple point is it just needs to be matching for the one and compatible so it all fits together nicely. Um, you're still going to need to make your needle fit. Now the other advantage of a stitching pony is because you're not touching the leather, the oils that naturally occur on your fingers and stuff are not going to transfer onto the leather, so you're not going to mark the leather as much. So all good reasons really why I should be investing in a in a stitching pony and if you're into leather work and if, if you uh, you know it's, I think it's worth having one let me know in the comments below I'm really curious do you guys have stitching ponies do you use them do you value them do you rate them like what are your thoughts on stitching ponies I'm actually really curious because obviously there's a bit of money involved and Christmas is coming up so I'm a bit curious to know how you guys do yours now, a lot of people would argue that I should have dyed it by this stage. Um, I understand that. Uh, but you can end up dyeing the leather and then having to bevel it and that kind of thing. And you end up, I think, from well, my own personal perspective is that you, you kind of have to dye it twice then. And then what, kind of what was the point, you know? It's sort of like double handling, which I'm really not a fan of, so. That's how I see it, that's how I view it. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below. Do you guys die first up? Or do you just do it at the end? Again, I'm quite curious to know how you guys do that. So I'm just gonna do it this way. This is just a plastic box that I had. And I thought, you know what, this is awesome. I'll do it this way. And pretty much all you're doing is you're going to place one of your lenses on top of the eye hole and then you're just going to stitch in behind it. Uh, again, I just use a, a, a long kind of running stitch. I'm not going to bother inserting the lens just yet because it's just going to get in the way. So you want to stitch around probably at least half if not two thirds of the way before putting your um, lenses into place. Now this is where a little bit of I guess um, attention to detail comes in. 
and we're all human we all make mistakes so don't get too hung up about it but um, you do need to make sure that the number of holes kind of match up when you're doing this fairly obviously if it doesn't it doesn't don't get you know you can get leather pretty cheaply you've only got to get in touch with one of the sort of artisans in your area or Google kind of leather supplies for your area and there'll be something somewhere there's still a postal service functioning in the world so people can always ship stuff to you I'd be interested to know how do you guys cope with some of this kind of like long stitching sort of projects do you like watch a movie in the background do you have a couple of drinks do you uh, put on some good tunes what do you guys like to do it's obviously can be a bit tedious and it can be a bit frustrating at times um, so what's your favorite boredom killer let me know I shouldn't say boredom it's not really boring I don't find it boring but now I know some people would um, would use rivets for this uh, so once again I'd be interested to know how you guys kind of manage some of this and do you like doing it this way or do you prefer more of a steampunky kind of idea to it constructions now complete I'm now using a leather die by a company called Maclace leather these guys are really good so if you're in Australia or New Zealand it's definitely worth hitting them up um, they are really good with their advice really seem to know their stuff and I, I really appreciate working with them and uh, the prices are good I don't worth hitting them up. Alright, so we're just using a light brown colour. Um, and I like to go pretty much make sure you get everything, everything that's visible anyway. And this gives it a really nice effect as you're working in. You may need to apply more than one coat, that's fine. It's going to depend on you as to what kind of colour or what kind of finishing that you're looking for for your Plague Doctor. I prefer to cover my hands with gloves as you can see. I let mine dry for a few minutes and then I come back and use what's called a sealer so again from the same company this is just a clear sealer it works a little bit like a, um, a varnish I suppose and it helps to protect your mask from things like uh, the environment the weather UV light that kind of stuff so And if you're going to be wearing something like this for a while, you're going to sweat in it and it will affect the leather. So having something like this on actually is a really good thing. Also protects your, your dye. So dyes will eventually deteriorate. So once, once again, it makes sense to do it that way. Right go, guys. That is the build for the Plague Doctor mask complete. Thank you once again for the pattern. I really appreciate that link is in the description below for anyone who's interested projects all done i'm so happy i'm so thrilled with this this has come out really really well it's just such a fantastic color i, I really like the style of it i like the way it's come together it's it's really not a very expensive project at all and it's just so much fun to do uh it, it really has been yeah it's just been really great and i've really enjoyed it Thank you so much for watching guys. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.